So take me back to your early interest in hip hop. Like, what is what's the first music and later the first hip hop that you remember falling in love with? Um, I remember, you know, I remember hip hop being becoming a reality and, and, and becoming, I think, a dream for us all um, that that were, you know, growing up around that time when um, WBLS had played Rappers Delight. You know what I'm saying? And they were playing the record, you know, probably. You know, every hour on an hour when they first started playing it. And I don't think a lot of people remember it was like an eight minute record. You know what I'm saying? So it, this shit was like really mind blowing. It would like have you in a trance. You couldn't believe what you would just be staring at the radio. You could, because you never thought like when, you know, you, look, you was listening to even the Cold Crush uh, or, um, you know, even Busy B or whatever. If you listen to the mixtapes that were out there, Grandmaster Flash, um, yeah, Curtis Blow. Um, you, you didn't know if it was going to be a reality, if it was ever going to be like what you heard on the radio. You had that, and you had your tapes with your friends and everything. But once you heard it on the, the radio, it was like everybody started to dream big and feel uh, some self-confidence in the community as far as definitely like young people. And, you know, but I remember that, um, you know, my, my, my favorite group was Funky Four Plus One More and Shy Rock, you know what I'm saying? And um, <laughs> I just remember the way Shy Rock used to, Ryan, she was, it was just mind blowing to me. I was just in love with her, and I didn't—I didn't even know what she looked like. I was just in love with her voice, and um, you know that—that that, re those are the early things that I really remember. You know what I'm saying? Did, did you were you in a musical household? Like, did you always hear music growing up? Yeah, um, we had we had a tradition in my household to we, we had to do chores every like Saturday, and everybody had to help and clean the house. And you know during that time, you know my my, my mother she used to blast music. And so we used to just dance around the house as, as we were doing our chores. And, and um, dance was always a big part. Like, I don't know if you saw like that, I think it was the, the Richard Pryor movie or something like that. When, you know, they used to have, you know, Richard, go, go ahead, Richard, tell a joke. You know what I'm saying? It was, I was always, you know, go ahead, Sean, dance. You know, I was the kid that always, like, do the dance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and, like the head is too big and all that. So that, that's, that's how I got started. So I was never afraid. So when music came on, I was always dancing, you know. And I'm still dancing to that, this day. And I guess they had a funny line in Notorious, but we did you go dancing again. But, you know, that, that's my relationship with music is through the, um, through the way it makes me feel, dancing. So when did, did you start getting like serious in terms of the dancing and stuff before you, like in high school, etc.? Were you like throwing down as a dancer? Yeah, I mean, I had, it was more like a tool for me to get girls. You know what I'm saying? Because like, um, you know, girls, whoever was, whoever could dance in the party, like, you know, nobody really had money. It wasn't like really that was wasn't the big thing. Like it was like who 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 was the best dance in the party? So I had to put my best foot forward because it was like a light skin revolution going on. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I definitely wasn't light skin, so I had to. I had to figure it out, you know what I'm saying? This was before my S curls, so I didn't even have like curly hair. So that's where I, I, was, just, I was just dancing um, to, to try to make sure that I could, you know, catch me a cutie. What was, uh, what was the earliest party you remember promoting? Ah, uh, yeah, um, the earliest party I remember promoting was, it was like a week, weekly um, Friday night at Howard University at this place called the Clubhouse. Yeah, Howard in the house. Yeah, 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 and um, for, for some reason I had came, um, you know, when I had went to Howard, I, I, I thought I was going to a party school. I know that it was like the best party school you could go to and party and get an education. So that was like really appealing to me. But when I had got there, the parties wasn't really hot. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I just saw it as an opportunity. And so as a way to, um, you know, to, to make money, I was doing that, and I was a, a doorman at the um, at the Marriott. Yeah, you did. Was that your only doorman gig, or did you do did you do any club doorman gigs as well? No, no. Yeah, that, that's my only doorman gig. You know what I'm saying? Um, I did, <laughs> not not yeah. trying to label you as a doorman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but it kind of you know it it kind of was it, it kind of showed like you know I didn't really have no ego. Like the doorman is like the most like back then, because the doorman used to have to wear these crazy hats. Like, and I had this hat that looked like I was from Troy in Roman times. They had you really looking like you was like, um, 
like maybe two weeks after slavery type of house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not good. <laughs> and you had to open the door, yes sir, no sir, and all that. And um, you know, I mean, it, it was a time, you know, you made good money. So you couldn't get too gas off of the parties though, because then you had to be humble when you go back to the, to the Marriott. I would be honest, I was kind of gassed on both though, because <laughs> Because um, as a college student, as a doorman, I was making like maybe a thousand a week because of tips. You know what I'm saying? Because in the D.C. area, it's all the government officials. And then with the parties, I had got up to like five thousand a week. So, um, you know, it was, I was, I had moved to, to a duplex, you know. Okay, so, so just to stop here. So you were doing better as a freshman in college than I am now. All right. All right. All right. So let's stop right there. Um, so tell me about your relationship with DC. I'm from DC, and you were you. I remember you. You started to be a huge name, and you know, of course, DC. Then after your time, really before it, during that time and after, became sort of the mega club capital. So tell me about your your relationship and your time in DC overall. Yeah, you know, overall my relationship, um, it, it, it was it was a. Uh, a eye-opening experience for me because I was coming from New York. Um, sometimes you get to go, you got to go down south, but you never really met anybody from like California, or London, or you know um, St. Louis or different parts of the country. So it was like mind-blowing to me when I saw it and heard all these different accents and these different trends and dances and ways to dress all in one place. Um, it, it had me start to look at the big picture of things and. Um, in D.C., it was um, Howard is like in the hood, so um, I still had, I was able to, you know, still gain a relationship with with people that were, you know, locals there. You know what I'm saying? And this was during the time when it was kind of rough. You know what I'm saying? It was like the murder capital of the world, like the, the the years I was going to. Georgia Ave down there was not a yeah, not the place to be. Yeah, it was not like you know, if there, there was a certain like respect for Howard University. But like two blocks from there, it, it was really going down, you know, um, crack wise and, and all of that. But it was a a, a big time in go go music, you know. Um, so were you a fan of go go? Did you actually get into go go at all? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really get because it was too dangerous to go there. <laughs> but but um, to, to the clubs because it, whatever go go club there would be a shootout or whatever. But it, that was just like you know somebody. It was probably nervous for me because I I wasn't from D.C. But somebody from D.C. was probably used to it. Well, and the funny thing is, this is the last thing I'll say about D.C., but the, the funny thing about D.C. Is, is it was either go to the go-go in the absolute hood, like in Anacostia or whatever, or the go-go bands all go out to the prep schools and high schools in the suburbs and play the whitest, richest parties ever. It's an incredible dichotomy. D.C. is fucked up. That's a whole different thing. So, <laughs> so you start, so then right out of there... You started interning uptown. Right? Yeah, yeah, but I was gonna say my relationship with DC, just sort of to finish the thought, was that I, I, I had a, a relationship with Howard, then also I started to meet, you know, um, people that lived in DC. So I started to hang out at the different clubs and started to know just different people that was like running the city. So then when I started throwing the parties, it was like a collage of people from the city coming and also people from Howard University. And it like just taught me a lot about, you know, DC. Was Mark Barnes already already doing things back then? Yeah, yeah, Mark Barnes was already big back then. That's like the club king of DC. Yes, yeah. So, what year did you get your your uh, the internship with Uptown, the famous internship with Uptown? Yeah, um, I had got my internship in the in the latter part. Um, I mean, in the beginning of my first year. And you started commuting. Yes, I started commuting um, the first the first year and the second year. All right. So all I know about the story is you know this is how they gloss it over. It's like. Puff was an intern for Andre Harrell. Then Puff was running uptown. You know what I mean? Like it's and it's a sort of crazy. Was it that fast? Because it sounds crazy fast. Um, it, it it was pretty fast. It was pretty fast as far as you know the, the time it, really, it, it it usually takes. Um, because but it was it was fast because of just circumstances, and also um, there was a void. There was nobody young really in the record industry. This was during a time where everybody in the record industry was like 45, 50 years old, you know, really calling the shots for hip hop, except for what was going on at Def Jam. And I tried to initially get my internship at Def Jam, but like I had an interview with Leo and, and you know, that didn't really, I don't even think he remembered interviewing me. And, um, and then I really wanted to be with Uptown and Heavy D had introduced me to, um, to Andre 